What's up guys and welcome back to the Kame Dimension. Today I want to talk about the elephant in the room, Kawaki. What is this guy up to in Boruto chapter 69 when he activated Ishiki's eye? We're going to cover what Kawaki is likely thinking about and why, and what the ramifications of that plan could be, and how part 1 of Boruto could end off with a bang, and we'll be tying in a lot of symbolism, foreshadowing, in several of my previous videos. And then on Sunday, I'm going to cover one part of all this that I am intentionally leaving out, and that's going to be Mitsuki. So if you're new, or one of the 4,000 returning viewers that keep watching my videos and not subscribing, come on, just support the channel and subscribe already. You're already watching the videos anyway, and if all 4,000 of you guys subscribe right now, and then I'll stop calling you out. To give you a sense of the direction we're heading, Kawaki's plan in Chapter 69 very likely could be what finally causes the rift between Kawaki and Naruto, Boruto, the Leaf Village, and the entire Shinobi world. Not only that, Kawaki's actions could even possibly lead to Kawaki sending Naruto away somewhere, as he mentions in the flash forward scene. Ever since we saw that opening scene, in the development of Kawaki's character and his bond with Naruto and Boruto and the others, we have been asking ourselves, what on earth led Kawaki to where he is in the time skip? And we'll cover that today. But let's back up for a second, and let's revisit Kawaki's moments in chapter 69. After Kawaki wakes up from his month-long nap, he asks Naruto, you're not gonna condemn me for killing Boruto? To which Naruto first gives a very serious expression, but then says, Relax, Boruto's fine, and then Kawaki looks absolutely shocked and confused. Naruto then says, his karma's power saved him. It's a long story, but he's alive. And then Kawaki has a serious expression, and then Naruto continues on being all nice like usual, telling Kawaki he's grateful, how Boruto says Kawaki took on a painful role, and how he belongs in Konoha and is part of Naruto's family. And throughout that entire conversation, not once does Kawaki look happy whatsoever. He remains very serious, cold, and almost angry looking, and then Ino tells Naruto and Sasuke to go back up Shikamaru, and after Naruto leaves, Kawaki again looks serious, looks at his karma seal on his hand, and then activates Ishiki's eye, still looking serious and almost angry. Kawaki did not look happy to hear that Boruto was alive. Instead, he seemed extremely uneasy about it. So let's go ahead and answer the question right now. What is Kawaki planning to do? Is he just going to follow Naruto to see what he's up to, or is he thinking about something else? I think Kawaki very likely might be planning to finish what he started. In other words, he's planning to try and kill Boruto again, probably because he doesn't trust Momoshiki and thinks that he's still up to something and will take over Boruto again. As far as Kawaki is concerned, if that karma seal is still on Boruto's hand, nobody is safe. Kawaki said this before in Chapter 55, where Kawaki says, I'll somehow get rid of your karma, I swear it. It's not over just cause mine's gone. I'm not stopping until we take care of yours too. I absolutely hate karma from the bottom of my heart, and I won't rest until I stamp them all out, no matter who has it. And then Sasuke makes that same expression he continuously keeps making when talking about Kawaki, and as I said in my chapter 68 and chapter 69 reviews, I think Sasuke is very weary about Kawaki, and knows that Kawaki is going down a dark path like himself in the past, and this will be important later on. The point here is that Kawaki is hell-bent on eliminating every karma in existence, even if he has to kill his own brother Boruto, which he already showed more than enough resolve to do in Chapter 66, which is kinda hypocritical of Kawaki considering he wished for his karma seal to come back, so now he has one too, and should probably be just as suspicious of Amado and of his karma seal just like he is of Momoshiki, but that's besides the point. So if Kawaki intends to kill Boruto, and Boruto, Sasuke, and Naruto are all headed to where Code, Ada, Amado, Delta, and Shikamaru are, this is where things start to get interesting. I can't tell you whether Ada will give her response to Shikamaru's proposal before Naruto and the others show up, or if they will show up first, but regardless, I don't think Ada is going to join the Leaf Village, and she's either going to say no, get interrupted by the others first, or say yes as an act and then change her mind once everyone else shows up. So regardless of the order of events, eventually, I think we're going to have a huge confrontation of Code, Ada, Delta, Shikamaru, Amado, Sasuke, Boruto, and Naruto, and then I think Kawaki will show up a bit later, and then Sarda and Mitsuki will show up after that, and Damon will probably show up eventually at some unknown point. So why is all of this important to the ending of part 1 and Kawaki's rift between the others? Why? Why? 
Seriously? You asked why? Allow me to break it down. Upon meeting Ada, Naruto and Sasuke are probably going to be under her influence. Their Ashra and Indra Chakra is probably not going to save them to be honest, since they seem to be leaning towards the DNA route. And this could either lead to Ada influencing everyone like she's playing a Naruto video game, or that will be irrelevant later on and I'll explain things both ways. Either way, now is a good time to get some action with Code, Naruto, and Sasuke, where hopefully Naruto's Toad Sage mode can live up to that hype earlier that we got, and Sasuke can get some really good moments where he begins to catch on to 8 hour Damon's weaknesses and expose them to everyone. Eventually though, Kawaki will show up after figuring out where Boruto is, and Ada will be delighted to see Kawaki. However, several problems will arise. Kawaki is there to kill Boruto, but Ada likely does not want Kawaki to kill Boruto, because that is only going to complicate things with Code and create even more of a problem for her, where he'll then want to sacrifice Kawaki to the Tentails, who Ada wants for her own goals. Which could then lead to one of three scenarios. Ada finally helps Code to get his limiters removed, she influences Naruto to pin him against Kawaki to help keep Boruto alive, or Naruto stands in Kawaki's way willingly since this time he thinks Boruto really doesn't need to be killed anymore and he supposedly can't be saved by Momoshiki ever again, or both Code removes his limiters and Naruto fights Kawaki. Now if Kawaki is trying to kill Boruto, Sasuke's reaction is going to be the key here. From all of the panels of Sasuke and his dialogue, we can tell that Sasuke feels that it is his duty, and his duty alone, to kill Boruto if he is taken over by Momoshiki, and he is very clearly very wary of Kawaki. So if Kawaki strikes at Boruto, Sasuke might think, this kid is even worse than the old me. I'm sorry Naruto, but he's gotta go. And then he might try to kill Kawaki before it's too late. And I think one of two things could happen from here and this will all relate to Momoshiki's prophecy from here on out. Either Kawaki kills Sasuke right in front of Boruto, Naruto, Sarada, and Mizuki for getting in his way, as he is not above killing anybody who gets in his way besides Naruto, or Ada will be like, you naughty naughty, no can do Sasuke, you're not killing my sexy prince, and you figured out too much about our abilities, so then she goes to tell him to attack Boruto or Sarada instead. Which could then lead to Boruto having to kill Sasuke, as I brought up several times in the past. Before going any further, I will say that Kawaki killing Sasuke sounds more realistic than Boruto killing Sasuke like this, but I also think Boruto killing Sasuke would have a lot more emotional impact and lead to more development of Boruto's character, as I explained very thoroughly in my video about Sarada's Mangeki of Sharingan, which I'll leave in the end credits for you guys. And I'll go ahead and talk about things and how they relate to Mobushiki's prophecy from both perspectives. Regardless of how it happens, Eventually, Sarada and Mizuki will probably show up from all of the commotion, and if Sasuke dies, Sarada most likely will awaken her Mount Geiko Sharingan, and Naruto will absolutely lose it, arguably even worse than when Boruto died because he'll be angry too, not just sad. Kawaki may then continue on trying to kill Boruto, and now Naruto, whether Ada ever tried to influence him or not, will probably try to get in Kawaki's way this time with his new Mount Geiko Toad Sage mode. That's not actually going to happen. Now since Kawaki does not want to kill Naruto because protecting Naruto is his biggest priority, when Kawaki realizes that it's hopeless and Naruto will not back down even at the cost of his own life, Kawaki may then decide that he's going to have to send Naruto away somewhere, just as Code gave him the idea back in chapter 62. As you can imagine, this surely will cause a rift between Kawaki and the others, and now Kawaki might once again go in after Boruto which is where Mitsuki can finally come into play, but we're going to skip over that and save it for Sunday like I said. With Kawaki beginning his rift with Boruto, Sasuke dead, and Naruto sent away somewhere, Momoshiki's prophecy can then be fulfilled, and allow me to explain it in greater depth. Under the condition of Kawaki attacking Boruto, killing Sasuke, and sending Naruto away somewhere, this all happened because of Boruto. Sasuke died and Naruto was sent away because of Boruto, who Kawaki was trying to kill because of Momoshiki and the Karma Seal. But Momoshiki was not in control here, it was just regular Boruto. And so as I explained very heavily in my video about Momoshiki's prophecy, where I tied in mythology about the evil eye and blue eyes, Boruto's blue eyes have cursed his loved ones and led to Boruto losing them. 
his master Sasuke and his father Naruto, and he's even losing his brother who has lost his way as well. He's lost what means the most to him. He's lost everything. Sorry to Sarada, Mitsuki, Konohamaru, Sumire, Hinata, and Himawari, but they get hardly any screen time in the manga, and Boruto honestly would probably be even more upset about losing these three than the others. Alternatively, we can have Kawaki send Naruto away, and Boruto has to kill Sasuke, which as I said, does a lot more for Boruto's character and the whole becoming an angel like Sasuke who protects the village from the shadows thing. In this way, the same concept of Boruto's blue eyes still applies, but even more so for Sasuke with Boruto actually dealing the killing blow to Sasuke. And it would give a very heavy parallel between Boruto and Kawaki, where Boruto, who is paralleling Sasuke in many ways, strikes down his master Sasuke, and Kawaki, who is paralleling Naruto in many ways, raises his hand against his master Naruto and sends him away somewhere. The master killing the student trope is very, very, very present in Naruto, so it's not surprising at all that it would end up in Boruto too. There's some cool paralleling and symbolism going on with this round. Now after this scene occurs, with Naruto gone and Sasuke dead, this is a good time for Mitsuki to step in as I said, maybe even Sarada with her Mangeku Sharingan as well, but again we're saving that for Sunday. So what about Boruto then? Well, if Coach still hasn't gotten his damn limiters off by this point, now is probably a good time to finally cash in on this. I'm sick of them going on and on about Code's limiters. Can we just take them off already? With Code getting a power up, Naruto and Sasuke gone, and Mitsuki and maybe Sarada fighting against Kawaki, and Boruto being 100% Ususki now, and Ada probably just sitting back and watching, Code now has his prime opportunity to defeat Boruto and feed him to the Tent Tails. And Boruto is not exactly in the best situation. Even if he can channel more of Momoshiki's power than he did in Chapter 64 and be on the level of what Momoshiki did in Chapter 65, it's probably still not going to be enough to defeat Code because otherwise, first of all, that's one hell of a buzzkill for Code's limiters, and I'll be pissed. But second of all, Code probably wouldn't have felt so confident about his power to take on Kawaki after his limiters were removed, where Kawaki was pretty even with Borushiki while Momoshiki was still in control who was going to beat up Code in Chapter 65 like Kawaki did in Chapter 67. So with Code having the upper hand on Boruto, it's time for Boruto to get yet another power up without any training. The Jogon, and it actually makes a lot of sense for it to appear when battling against Code, as I explained in my video about the Jogon appearing in the manga near the end of Part 1 in this very battle I'm talking about right now. And the reason why is because Code fights very similarly with his claw marks as Urashiki did with his space-time ninjutsu called Yamatsu Hirasaka that Kaguya also used, where both characters pop in and out of the battlefield, Code using his claw mark space-time ability and Urashiki using Yamatsu Hirasaka. As I said in that video, this is important because Boruto's Jogon appeared in response to Urashiki going in and out of dimensions against Boruto and Shinki. So Boruto's Jokan might appear again for pretty much the exact same reason, and this could help even out the battlefield. As far as how each of these battles end up finishing, I kinda hope it's like Naruto vs Sasuke at the end of part 1 where things are left unfinished. We can have a victor of each battle, but no one dies and the loser is able to get away. That way, we have a lot of conflict and loose ends with all of our different antagonists. We still have Amato being sus, we have Ada and Damon. We have Code, and now we have Kawaki as well. As a result, Kawaki would already have his power up via Ishiki's eye and the Karma Seal with the horn sprouted. Boruto could have his power up with the Jogon and the Karma Seal, possibly with the horn sprouted as well. Sarada could have awakened her monk Gekko Sharingan, and Miski could have a Sage Transformation with the horn, which if you haven't figured out by now, I'll be discussing that on Sunday. And each of these characters would have something to train for over the time skip. Kawaki to master all of Ishiki's abilities and possibly progress his Isusification further, depending on what they want to do with the Karma Seal and Ishiki's character. Boruto to master his Jogon and Momoshiki's abilities, Sarada to master her Mangekyo and possibly learn the Byakugo Seal, and Miski to harness his Great Sage power. And then we can have whatever setup we want to have afterwards going into the time skip. Now that's a bang of an ending for Boruto Part 1. A lot of shit just went down. Now obviously this is not meant to be a prediction for chapter 70, these events would definitely take several chapters to flesh out properly, but I definitely could see this being the general direction that the story is going, and I think this is probably what Kawaki is thinking about in chapter 69, to try and kill Boruto again, 
and this could probably lead to Kawaki having his rift with the Leaf Village. I want to hear what you guys think though. Let me know in the comment section below if you agree or disagree. But that's a wrap on today's video. So thank you guys for watching till the end. Like and subscribe if you're new. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.